In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Opus 88 Omar fountain pen. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about this pen coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. Here we have the Opus 88 Omar Demonstrator Fountain Pen. Pretty cool looking pen in my opinion. It's a pretty squarish design overall. We have sort of flattened ends here and you know it, there's a little bit of a, a bulge in the middle and a bit of a taper down here but really compared to a lot of pens pretty squarish. As a comparison you know here's a Sailor King of pen which has a lot more taper going on. In terms of design, we have different levels of sort of transparency here, which I, I think is interesting. These, you know, this blind cap here and this finial are like a solid acrylic, very nice clarity in there. They look pretty cool. And then we have some more sort of frosted areas. And then we have areas that aren't perfectly clear. It's a little bit hard to tell with the ink in here, but that sort of are less frosted. So it's interesting levels of translucency here that I, I like and that are interesting. I also like the matte black trim. I just think it looks pretty cool. So we have this sort of rounded finial and then we have this black cap ring and then the clip is on a ring below it. Um, and it's sort of a, a tie shaped clip with a little step around the edge here and it says opus 88 in orange which i think looks really quite nice now we can see some threading up at the top here and then we have the nib which you can see a bit through here there's sort of a, a frosted sleeve in between like a clear plastic on the outside and then here we have even deeper frosting i'll take this cap off here just so you can see it there's sort of like a there, there's a step in here and if you look on the inside you can see there's like a big ring here so it's sort of a thick piece of acrylic in there pretty nice build quality it has a very solid feel it's very rigid feeling now going down to the body and then we'll talk about the nib this looks pretty clear but it's not it's slightly frosted it almost like there's like a little bit of a texture on the inside of course on the outside it's very smooth we can see this eyedropper mechanism in here, which I'll talk about in a bit. And then we have lots and lots of threading here, almost an inch worth of threading. And then we have a black matte metal ring and that sort of solid, clear plastic lined cap there. And then looking at the section, we have this clear area here, which you can see sort of the tube thing that feeds into the, the feed of the pen. And then we have threading, a little O-ring before that threading, and then a, a more frosted area where you can't really see the feed in there. And then we have the number six Yovo nib, which says 1.5 because it's a 1.5 millimeter stub. And then it says Opus 88, and it has the standard Yovo decoration. Now, I don't like the engraving of the Opus 88 bit. It doesn't look the same depth and quality as the Yovo standard engraving on there just looks a little bit cheap but you know for this pen under a hundred dollars that's okay it's not a big deal it's a very nice writing nib plastic feed and again number six Yovo so it's threaded you can take it out and you can put in you know a, a gold nib or one with a different point or you have a custom nib put that potentially in here so a lot of nice options with that now talking about the, the filling system, so this is an eyedropper and it comes with an eyedropper, which I obviously didn't clean that well. Basically the way that I fill this and the way the instructions say to fill it is you unscrew the section here and it just comes off and you stick the eyedropper in the uh, inkwell, drop the ink and then drop the ink into the pen. So the benefits of the eyedropper really are you can fill this with a lot of ink. You know this whole area here can be filled with ink. You do have a seal so you shouldn't be getting a lot of ink coming out of the nib when this is all the way tightened down. I do find that with this pen it doesn't ever seem to dry up which is a little bit different than the Japanese ones but 
the mechanism, as far as I can tell, is the, the same. And that's basically the reason that I bought this pen. I thought it was cool that it's a demonstrator showing off that high-end eyedropper mechanism. You know, the type of pens that have this are like that Danny Trio that I mentioned, or a Namiki Emperor. You know, these are $2,000 plus pens that have this, I'll call it an old school Japanese style filling system. So it's pretty cool. I know eventually <laughs> one of those seals, those are going to fail and I'm going to have a leak on my hands. That's why I don't like eyedroppers. They're just a little bit of a headache. But anyway, when you want to write with this, you unscrew it a little bit. This modulates the airflow or the ink flow into the nib. So opening it a little bit allows the ink to flow. You can open it more, you can get more ink flow, you can tighten it up and, and get less. So it's very nice and a pen for, you know, retail for this pen is like $120. I, I think you can get it around 90 these days. Anyway, let's do some measurements here. And this is my upgraded ruler. It's now a paper mine ruler. It doesn't say Franklin copy anymore. This is roughly 150 millimeters. Pretty long pen. It's an oversized pen, no question about it. Now we're looking at about 137 millimeters uncapped. You can post this. It just, I mean, look at this. It's nuts. It becomes too long and it is absolutely top heavy. This is roughly 180, 181 millimeters. That is super long. The grip section, it's quite a nice sized grip section, good length here. It's not the thickest, but it is, you know, compared to a normal pen, I would say it's definitely pretty big. 2.5 millimeters at the widest point and then at the end here before it starts to kind of flare out, 10.9. And just as a comparison, just looking at these two pens here, you can see that this is actually even bigger than the Sailor King of Pen. However, the King of Pen does course have a noticeably larger nib and it's also a thicker grip section so if we look it does have a taper to it so if we look at the the narrowest part it's 12.2 and at the widest about 13 so it's a little bit thicker but I find both of these very comfortable but this is in hand it is noticeably thicker but you do have a shorter grip section also anyway just pointing that out now, going on to the weight, and this is relatively empty. 134.77 grams, pretty heavy pen. It's this, you know, there's a lot of thick plastic in this pen, 18.44 grams. So definitely has a nice weight to it. I only use this uncapped, unposted rather, and it's super comfortable. I love the long grip section. It's got a good thickness to it and a nice weight. It's definitely not too heavy. Okay, let's do the writing sample. I'm going to be using my Paper Mind Mitsubishi Bank Paper Notebook, and this is a brand that I created, and for Blake's broadcast subscribers, you can get 10% off with code BB10. All right, let's do it. So, this is the Opus Omar. That's Opus 88, sorry. And this is a 1.5 millimeter stub. Hiroshi Zuku Yu Yaki. Let's try fast writing. Ooh. I consider that performance pretty much flawless. I've been using this pen for, I'd say, uh, two months now. I've had no performance issues other than it can take a minute to get it started when you first fill it. It writes really nicely. It's a it's a Yovo nib. They're great. So you do have a little bit of you know natural line variation, being that it is a 1.5 millimeter stub. So you can get a little bit of flair to your writing if you want that. 
in terms of reverse writing, this is a stub, so it kind of does it, yeah. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but it doesn't seem... There's not that much of a difference in terms of the line width. Yeah, no reason to do that. And like most steel Yovo nibs, this is definitely a nail. You can get a little bit of variation out of there, but not too much. So what are my pros and cons for the Opus 88 Omar fountain pen? The biggest pro for me is definitely the looks. I think it looks really cool with these sort of different levels of translucency kind of in the body. And I like it with this black matte metal trim. I think it looks really cool. I like the oversized size. And I like that we're getting this high-end eyedropper filling system in a pen that can be bought for under $100. So I think there's a lot of good things here. I like that we have a Yovo number 6 nib. It's threaded. You can change it if you want to. But it does come with a very nice standard 1.5 millimeter stub nib, which is a great performer. In terms of cons, well, I would have liked to have seen a black nib that would have just sort of completed the look a bit more uh, instead of the silver one. I don't like the Opus 88 engraving on the nib. It just doesn't look as good as the rest of the engraving. Small gripe. That's really it. I bought this pen because it was an eyedropper with this uh, sort of style that you would see on a very high-end pen and that you get it in this see-through demonstrator form. I thought that was really cool. Now, I personally am not an eyedropper fan. I just know eventually one of those seals is going to fail and I'm going to have a mess. If you guys have this pen, if you like this pen, let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more fountain pen paper and ink videos, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much and until next time.